The North Atlantic Alliance was founded in the aftermath of the Second World War. Its purpose was to secure peace in Europe, to promote cooperation among its members, and to guard their freedom. All of this in the context of countering the threat posed at the time by the Soviet Union. The Alliance's founding treaty was signed in Washington in 1949 by a dozen European and North American countries. It commits the Allies to democracy, individual liberty and the rule of law, as well as to peaceful resolution of disputes. Importantly, the treaty sets out the idea of collective defence, meaning that an attack against one ally is considered as an attack against all allies. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, ensures that the security of its European member countries is inseparably linked to that of its North American member countries. The organization also provides a unique forum for dialogue and cooperation across the Atlantic. The Alliance started with 12 member countries in 1949. However, the founding treaty allows for other European nations to join the Alliance, as long as all existing allies agree. Any prospective member must share NATO's core values and have the capacity and willingness to contribute to security in the Euro-Atlantic area. Today, NATO has 30 members who are stronger and safer together. For seven decades, NATO has ensured peace within its territory. While threats and the way NATO deals with them have evolved over time, the purpose, values and founding principles of the Alliance do not change. For its first four decades, the Cold War defined the Alliance. Collective defence was NATO's main role. When that confrontation ended in 1989, and with the collapse of the Soviet Union, some said that NATO had fulfilled its purpose, that it was no longer needed. And yet the Alliance is still here today. So why has NATO stood the test of time? The end of the Cold War offered hope for progress and peace but it also ushered in a new era of instability. NATO has responded to changes in the security environment by shifting its focus and taking on new tasks. Beyond ensuring the collective defense of its members, NATO seeks to promote security through partnership and cooperation. Since the early 1990s, the Alliance has developed relations with non-member countries, including former Cold War adversaries of the former Eastern Bloc. Some of these partners have since become members of the Alliance. Today, working with non-member countries and other organizations is considered to be one of NATO's fundamental tasks. It works with 40 partner countries as well as with other international organizations, like the United Nations and the European Union. NATO has taken on an important role in international crisis management since the end of the Cold War. Working closely with partner countries, the Alliance helped to end war and build sustainable peace in the Balkans. In the wake of the 9-11 terrorist attacks on the United States, allies and partners deployed forces to Afghanistan to help bring stability. During the Arab Spring, NATO led an air campaign over Libya to protect civilians being targeted by the Gaddafi dictatorship. At sea, NATO and its partners have helped to prevent piracy off the Horn of Africa and are cooperating to fight terrorism in the Mediterranean Sea. NATO has also supported international efforts to stem illegal migration and human trafficking in the Aegean Sea. Today, we face a much broader range of threats than in the past. To the east, Russia has become more assertive with the illegal annexation of Crimea and destabilization of eastern Ukraine, as well as its military buildup close to NATO's borders. To the south, the security situation in the Middle East and Africa has deteriorated, causing loss of life, fueling large-scale migration flows and inspiring terrorist attacks. NATO is responding by reinforcing its deterrence and defence posture, as well as supporting international efforts to project stability and strengthen security outside NATO territory. We are also confronted with the spread of weapons of mass destruction, cyber attacks and threats to energy supplies as well as environmental challenges with security implications. These challenges are too big for any one country or organization to handle on its own. So NATO is working closely with its network of partners to help tackle them.
While NATO continues to adapt to changes in the security environment, the fundamentals of how it works haven't changed. Consensus and consultation are part of NATO's DNA. All member countries are represented in the North Atlantic Council, where decisions are taken by consensus, meaning unanimously, expressing the collective will of all the nations. There is no NATO army. National forces are under national command. When called upon, allied nations volunteer their troops, equipment or other capabilities to NATO-led operations and exercises. Each member state pays for its own armed forces and covers the costs of deploying its forces. But together, the allies get a lot more security for a lot less cost than they would if they had to do it alone. Each member contributes a small percentage of its national defense budget to NATO. The national contributions pay for running the political and operational headquarters in Belgium, as well as the integrated military command structure across NATO territory. They also cover some of the costs of shared military capabilities, systems and facilities needed for communication, command and control, or for logistical support to NATO operations. Other multinational capability projects are funded by groups of allies. Thanks to years of joint planning, exercises and deployments, soldiers from different nations can work well together when the need arises. Working together, the Allies are stronger.